Amin wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd Ahabata fillah as is a big problem that we face uh, around the world but especially we see a lot of this activity in Europe in places uh, like of course uh, Brussels and in Sweden and places like Gothenburg and so forth that we have a lot of tekfiris, a lot of extremists and they have some of the highest concentration of people who go to fight with Ahl al-Dalal wa al-Bid'ah they have the highest concentration of youth that are maybe perhaps alienated in those societies they feel the racism they feel isolated and due to that that encourages them and that they find hope in traveling and joining groups like Al-Qaeda and Daesh or ISIL or ISIS or whatever they want to call them and this is a terrible dilemma that the Muslims face and even the non-Muslims face this because of those returning extremists and those places are beds of extremism so what about Ahl Sunnah when they reside in those places how should they interact with these people number one if they have the ability to give them dawah they have knowledge and they have the azima the, 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 the determination and the courage then of course they should call the people away from bid'ah and khurafat and the extremism of takfir and the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said balagha anni wa aya that relate about me you know my traditions even if it's one ayah meaning give give something of dawah to the extent of your ability that doesn't mean that you make a dawah based on ignorance nor should you involve yourself in debating the second thing is we have to know the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said al khawarij kilab an nar that the khawarij and these neo tekfiris which in some ways are worse than the original Khawarij in some ways that they are the dogs of the hellfire so know that they're not on the haq know that you should not cooperate with them and I'll give you two reasons why number one because we know that the Salaf did not cooperate in ta'awun with Ahl Bidah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us ta'awun ala biri wa taqwa and cooperate in piety and righteousness so it's not really possible because the takfiris are the most extreme even the Sufis because they spend most of their time on their internal aspects of ibadah and so forth that they probably have a more right to have a type of cooperation when you're in an oppressed situation and you're a minority than the tekfiris because the tekfiris are so extreme that they will stop at nothing in advancing their deviant thoughts and deviant aqidah and I'll give you some examples what you'll find amongst a lot of the tekfiris for one uh, or the second point with regards to them is that aside from the Sharia point of view which we already mentioned there's another aspect which is also related to the Sharia in that you will by praying with them by cooperating with those people who you know are extremists you know who call for uh, 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 harming uh, people and extreme ideas and extremist thought and killing and 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 spilling blood and stealing from everyone and slaughtering that you know you will of course be under the scope of the intelligence agencies from the west and the east from around the world so you only destroy yourself in this life as well as the hereafter 
You have no benefit by cooperating with those people. So, my advice, as our ulama made clear, is that you should not pray with those people if you have an alternative. If you do not have an alternative in the masajid there in Gothenburg or the masajid there in Brussels or the masajid there in wherever are mainly takfiri in their orientation and mainly jihadi in their orientation, not jihad shara, but jihad al-hawa and jihad al-shaitan. That if this is their orientation, and you have no other alternative, then of course you, you pray there and you leave. Don't sit and, and, and intermix with those people and take lessons from those people who call to extremism. Do not learn your deen from the extremists, from the takfiris, and we have countless examples. I'm from Seattle, Washington. In my Seattle, unfortunately, there was a lot of nishat in the 90s of these takfiris, and they only destroyed and helped to cause the community to be under scrutiny and to be harassed by the FBI and harassed by other agencies, and there's no benefit. And every one of them were either broken and became to the other extreme, mutasahu, or left Islam altogether Together. Some became Shia, some became, subhanAllah, one extreme to the other. One became a well-known FBI agent, subhanAllah, even was on the radio, even the FBI themselves, when they questioned us, they said the same thing, they said, so-and-so is working with us, 100% cooperation, subhanAllah. Look at this, one minute you're the ultimate uh, extremist jihadi takfiri, next minute you're working for the intelligence agency. Wa'iyadhan billah min ha'ula'i. So beware Ahabatifillah from the extremist and do your best to make ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make da'wah to the extent of your ability to the people, and set a good example because Ahlul Sunnah should always be that shining light. If the people see the shining light of Ahlul Sunnah, they will ask, well, why aren't you calling to run to Syria? Why aren't you calling to go to Afghanistan? Why aren't you calling to this? Why aren't you calling to kill people and rob people and steal from people and say it's in the name of Islam? Then you can show them through light and, and, and that shining cup of, of Sunnah. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct, so Allah Azza wa Jalla. Anything I said that was incorrect, so myself and the Shaitan. Wassalamu alaikum wa sallam ala Nabi Muhammad.